This lesson is about the creation of a file system on disk. Now that you know how to partition a disk drive the way you want, the next step is to create a file system in those partitions. Now if you want to create a file system for other operating systems such as BIOS or FreeBSD or whatever, you'll need to use the utility on those operating systems to create the actual file system for them. Once you've created them, Linux can use them, but for the most part, you must let each operating system create its own file system. Once again, I'll be using a floppy disk to show you how this works. It couldn't be simpler. The utility program that creates a file system is called MKFS, which is sort of an acronym for Make File System. To create a file system on the floppy disk, you'll need to do this. That's all there is to it. The floppy disk is now formatted and ready to store files and directories. You don't want to do this on an existing drive before you save all the data because any files that were on the disk will be destroyed. The MKFS command builds a new and completely empty superblock and inode table, so anything that was on the disk before that is gone. You may have noticed that I didn't use the F disk to partition the floppy first. That's because Linux treats an entire floppy disk as a single partition. If you're creating a file system on a hard disk drive, you'll need to partition the drive first and then use the names of the partitions on that drive, not the entire drive. To format this floppy, we just use the defaults. Let me go through some of the things that MKFS told us about this drive. It tells us more than we need to know. This is the name and version number of the program that actually ran to do the formatting. It often happens in Linux that one command actually runs another. In this case, the MKFS command will run different programs depending on the options you specify. More on that in just a little bit. This file system doesn't have a label, so no label is shown here. This is simply a verification that this is a Linux file system. The MKFS utility is actually capable of creating file systems for other operating systems, but that's another story. This is the size of each block. Each time a file is extended and needs more space, the space for it is allocated in increments of this size. Now this is the number of inodes allocated for the superblock and the total number of 1K blocks available on disk. As you can see, it is indeed a 1.44 megabyte floppy. Now this may need some explanation. Whenever you insert a floppy disk, it has to be mounted as a directory before you can read and write to it, and it must be unmounted when you're through with it. The same thing is true of hard drives, but they're usually mounted as part of the boot process. I'll be going through all of that shortly. Anyway, this statement says that the file system will be checked for integrity once out of every 25 times it's mounted, or every six months, whichever comes first. Sort of like changing the oil in your car. The utility that does the integrity check is called FSCK, which is sort of an acronym for File System Check, and we'll be dealing with it shortly. The Tune2FS program mentioned on the last line can be used to change the file system settings, but there's little need to do so. The defaults are quite reasonable. You may recall that Linux was originally devised to be a copy of Minix. Minix has its own file system. The original Linux file system was named EXT because it was an extension of the Minix file system. Later, the Linux file system was improved and the newer version was named EXT2. This has proven to be an excellent file system and has served the Linux community very well. The latest version of the Linux file system is EXT3. It's a journaling file system and is almost immune to damage from a system crash. It's fundamentally the same as EXT2, except journaling has been added with two benefits. First, you are less likely to lose data on a system crash, and second, the file system fix-up following a crash is very quick. Now, your version of MKFS may default to EXT2, but you can override it and specify EXT3 this way. 
Also, if you want MKFS to check for bad sectors on disk, you can enter the command with a C option this way. And MKFS can be used to create a DOS floppy with this command. Here, let me show you. And that's all there is to formatting a DOS floppy. Now that you can create file systems on disk, all that's left is to attach them to a Linux system. And that's the subject to the next lesson.